Okay, so this morning's clearing is on nicotine, or basically cigarettes, or any kind of tobacco, meaning pipes, or cigars, or cigarettes, or all of those things. So it's basically tobacco and nicotine, okay? All right, so with anything that has to do with an addiction where you obsessively or compulsively or you have to have it, there's something going on. There's a disconnect, there's um, interferences, there's issues around emotional stuff. So there's all kinds of components that are contributing to your inability to just either stop smoking or, or to get off or away from an addiction. So, so here's the thing, you notice too that it becomes something where it's a physical sensation in the body, right? It kind of like a driving kind of a feeling that just kind of pulls you. It's a mental thing. It's an emotional thing. And it has a lot of interferences and components. So something I want to remind you that most people do not know or are not aware of is that when you don't inhabit your body fully, meaning you've had traumas, you've had shock, you've had times in your life, and we'll just use this lifetime first, but somewhere in this life, something has happened to you where you've left your body. Now, think about this. You know the feeling when, when you get surprised or shocked? You can feel that, like, zing in your body. You know what I'm talking about? Like somebody, something happens. Maybe you've had an accident, or maybe someone said something to you, or maybe you were being attacked or belittled or shamed or humiliated by your parents or somebody in control, someone that we look up to, okay? You know that fear, anxiety, energy that happens? You all know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so when that happens, now think about this. Every time that happens, little essences of you leave. Now sometimes they come back in and sometimes they don't. So if you grow up in a situation where there was a lot of abuse, a lot of terror, fear, whether it was verbal abuse, shaming energy, frightening energy, overpowering energy, controlling energy, anything that you experienced as a child from any of your parents or any of your siblings or anyone who in some way was not you, they could even be younger than you, smaller than you, and you can still have reaction. So you're constantly coming in and out of your physical body. The more intense situations, like if we have a constant uh, abusive or fearful or anxious situation where you're living it daily, you're not going to be in your body. I'm going to tell you straight up. Okay? Now your mind is here. You have an awareness. But oftentimes when people start to get clearings, pretty soon they start to feel their body in a way they never felt them before. All of a sudden they're feeling their feet. They're feeling their legs. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's areas inside the, the body that you become aware of because now you're there. So most people live kind of up here. You're up in your head, you're in your mind, you're in your thoughts. You're away from yourself, okay? And when you are not in your body, your body becomes vulnerable. How many people learned that the, your body is your temple, that the only thing and only one that belongs in there is you, and that you have to claim it. Did you ever learn that? No, okay? If you don't, you leave your body in everything that has the same frequencies that you have, not just in this lifetime, but all your soul imprints come into your body. So all the frequencies that you have, all the, all the things you've lived, all the, all the issues that you have, in your soul essence, your soul imprint that you brought forward here is inside of you. So when you're no longer housed in your body, then other beings with same frequencies, same issues, same health issues, mental issues, emotional issues come in to your body. When you're not here, your body's going to get really whacked. And what people don't understand is that when we have even one entity in our body that has an emotional issue, we're going to feel it as though it is us. We're not going to know that it's not us. We're just going to have these thoughts and these feelings that don't stop. And we can't make it stop. But once we take these beings out, it's over. It's like, oh, wow, what happened? 
I mean, when I'm doing a removal on swimming, and people sometimes start to cry. The moment the entity's gone, they stop crying. It's like, whoa, what was that? And they're thinking it's them. It's not them. Okay? So addictions, whether they're, they're tobacco or, or nicotine or whatever the addictions are, you're going to be inundated with other beings inside your body wanting that. Okay? So we not only just look at what's the trauma, we have to start clearing trauma of this lifetime and get you back in your body. We also have to start clearing trauma from past incarnations as well. If we don't, you know, it, it's an issue that you won't be able to resolve, or you can. I mean, people do quit smoking, but sometimes there's always a desire, or there's always a thought, or even, you know, years later they might start again, whatever. But in order to be liberated from anything, we need to release the frequencies, the traumas, the darkness inside, darkness meaning unconsciousness that's inside of you, and all the energies that are not you, all the frequencies that are not you, that are contributing to whatever's happening, needs to be released. Okay? In doing so, we pull more of you back into your physical body, and you start to feel more present, more capable, stronger, and you start to claim your body in a way you've probably not ever done in, in your hundreds of lifetimes. Okay? These teachings were not available to just, to just anybody. Higher level teachings were only available for the elite. This is elite teachings. Of course, now we're bringing it into mainstream. It was all about disempowering, so you've all been disempowered <laughs> through all of your incarnations, unfortunately. A lot of suffering could have been ended if you would have always been told who you really are. Okay? We're all dealing with it, okay? <laughs> all of us. All right, so when you think about your addictions, when you think about smoking, we're using tobacco this time. This is nicotine, nicotine, all, even chewing tobacco. Okay? Reminds me of that song, chew tobacco, chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit, whatever. <laughs> Country Western, okay? <laughs> all right, so anyway, there's all these emotional things around smoking. Okay, once again, cigarette smoking, and oftentimes people like their first morning cigarette or cigarette after a meal. So again, there is a little bit of like ceremony, rituals that people do. Something to do with their hands, nervousness. People grab a cigarette, okay? People get in situations, they're talking to somebody, and they need a cigarette because they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know what to do with their hands. And then, when, and then there's always this fixation. There's always something happening where you're putting something in your mouth. Okay? So a lot of people say, oh yeah, well you weren't nursed. Well, that's not always true. Okay? So there's all kinds of different reasons. But we're going to start unraveling and exposing these reasons as we start going into it. So when people have a nervousness or a feeling of discomfort in their own body, and they don't know where it's coming from. How many people literally feel like when you're just like by yourself, all alone, other than in a state of meditation and peaceful and just enjoying whatever, how about if I said, okay, let's just put you in a room and you're just gonna sit there with yourself. What's that feel like? Does that feel like, oh yeah, that sounds awesome. Or does it feel like, oh, a little scary? Without distraction, no TV, no music, no computer. You're just with you. There's an actual burn that, you're, that you'll feel if you even just think about it. You know what I'm talking about? Okay? That burn has to do with trauma, shock, pain, despair, deep, deep, deep emotions that are housed in your subconscious that have not been released. Okay? When you stand up in front of a group of people, this is getting activated. That's why people have such discomfort in standing in front of a group and just talking because it feels like subconsciously that they're knowing what's inside of you and you don't even know what's inside of you. Everything is getting activated when you become visible, when you stand up in front of people and the body goes into terror because you may have had past lives where being visible or in any way, you know, you've been hurt, sometimes killed, okay? So you have all this trauma stuff. But you also have things around beliefs where you think there's something wrong with you, where you're not wanted, where you're not loved, where you don't belong, where you don't matter, where you're unworthy. All these issues 
are buried in the subconscious. And when they get activated by being in life, just being in life, you got to do something to keep yourself occupied. So cigarettes is one of the ways you do that. Or tobacco is one of those ways you do it. Have something in your mouth, something that, uh, that kind of gives you like this little, um, what is that word from people who have like their baby blankets? What's the word I'm looking for? You know what I mean? Like um, it's a, it's a pacifier. pacifier. Yes, that, thanks. Um, so there's a pacification, pacifier that you've got something to deal with, something to hold on to, something that kind of can keep you distracted and away from feeling these energies. That's why if you put yourself in a situation where you're going to be just by yourself for a day or a week or whatever, most people can't stand it. They, can't, they have to do something. They got to, you know, it's like it becomes like a really intense, uncomfortable feeling, sensations inside. That's because you're not being distracted. You're with yourself. Okay? So with cigarettes or tobacco, as we look at the energy of that, there's a lot of frequency of anxiety and fear, okay? So the fear energy, it, it is all connected to really deep, deep feelings and anxieties and fears around feeling like you're not wanted or you don't belong or you're not loved, okay? So, and then too, we, you know, we often have families where the parents smoke so they think, okay, well, the kids just start smoking because of that. Well, if your parents are smoking, there's some kind of avoidance happening. Duh. Okay? So you too have grown up with some kind of avoidance, some, t some kind of way of avoiding, because a lot of families, how many people here really grew up in families where we, where we really talked about things, where we really exposed things, where we really shared and went deeper and deeper into what's really going on, or you know, had that opportunity where someone really listened to you and really heard you. Most people don't because we don't have that kind of communication. It's all about bury it, put it away, rise above it. How many times have you ever been told, stop crying, you're not hurt? Stop crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, that was more our generation. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so all of these places have, it's like we've learned how to bury, bury, bury our feelings. When we bury them, they don't go away. They're still there, okay? So then we have to find something, some pacifier, some external thing that's going to help us not to have to feel inside. So as we unravel these places and liberate you from a lot of these traumas, the, it becomes a non-issue. It becomes easier to just be in your body. And you want to be here, you know? How many people also say, oh, the world's messed up? Oh, the world sucks. Is it really the world that sucks and that's messed up? Or is it the people? Okay? Kind of like people saying love hurts. Love does not hurt. Abandonment, rejection, betrayal, things of that nature hurt. Love itself does not hurt. Okay? So we've kind of got our thoughts a little askewed here. But the world is not causing our torture or our pain or our suffering. It's our emotional body that's causing that. And it's our reactions and interactions and connections to human beings that cause it. Okay, but the core thing, the core issue of humanity is feeling that they're not loved. Bottom line. So telling yourself I'm loved or, you know, trying to do affirmations, things like that, is not going to change it. it. Might make you feel good for a little while, but whatever's inside is always going to come back. If we unravel the trauma, unravel these places, you're going to come in. That's the good news. So when we think about the feeling, the need to, to get away from ourselves, to get away from, if we really understand that this is really what we're doing, we're trying to get away from something inside of us that lives within, it helps us to make a different choice. Because we have to be willing to look at ourselves, you know what I mean? It's like we need to be willing to face what's inside. If we don't, then we're going to keep doing things to, to not be here or to avoid being present in the physical body. In this time period that we're in right now, we call it the acceleration. It's a really intense time. Everyone you know is feeling the intensity. Everyone. Okay? 
people's lives are, you know, getting flipped. Reactions, traumas, dramas, everything that's inside of you is literally being pulled to the surface. That means that some of your behaviors, some of your thoughts and your feelings and your actions and your deeds and, and how you respond, every, it's like you're almost out of control. Have people felt noticed that? That's because what was once able to stay buried, and we had a world where we could function, this is what's happening now is, if you don't know this, I'm going to share it, but there were people we call initiates. If you know anything about the pyramids, you know that the pyramid shapes hold a certain frequency. Each pyramid would hold a different, you know, different frequency, so different, different things, different issues could be worked on. But basically, the energetics of that created an, uh, uh, an energetic electromagnetic field that would literally start to pull these subconscious feelings to the consciousness. That's what's happening right now. Okay? So that's why it isn't no longer just those who are seeking to awaken, it's everyone, the whole world. If you're alive on the planet, it's happening. The good news is that some of you are aware and awake to what's happening and can navigate it. Others just feel like they're being victimized, feeling they're being punished, feeling they're being tortured. That's not the case. Your subconscious emotional energy is coming to the surface. It's being pulled out, whether you want it, whether you believe it, whether you know it, it's coming. You can't stop it, okay? So with that, behaviors get more intense, you get more extreme, you get further and further away from yourself, and you get more trauma, feeling traumatized, and all you, well, all you really need to do is stop, come back in, let it move through your body, feel it, own it, accept it, die to it basically, and energies and frequencies will leave. Sounds easy. <laughs> it's really intense. Most people can't do it. Okay, so clearings are awesome to help release these kinds of frequencies from your body. Okay, another thing too is the moment you start having addictions, the moment you start smoking, if you're not ha living in your body, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to attract all kinds of other people, disincarnate beings, who also smoke cigarettes or tobacco, and they want that, that fix, they want that feeling that you get from smoking, okay? They want the, the, um, the ability to avoid oneself. That's what they're thinking, but it becomes like a physical addiction. So wh whoever dies with those kinds of addictions, they have that frequency. If they haven't gone into the light, then they're on the earth plane and you become like a little magnet or you've got, you got this whole energy field that says, come on in, I don't want to be here. You can have this body, I don't want it. And guess what? Hundreds, 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 hundreds of entities come in. Thought forms, people's thoughts. When you leave, you know how you have a, an awareness? Outside, not that's not your physicality. That awareness is what goes into people's bodies. You maintain that same awareness of whatever your addictions are, whatever your issues are, you bring it in. So you have all these people inside of you. Some of you, if you notice, maybe coming into the clearing, you might have started to feel a little nervous. Or you might have started feeling like some kind of resistance, like, well, maybe I don't really want to go. Okay, that's not you. That's other things inside of you that are contributing to that. So what's, how to get the most out of the clearing is when you think about the feeling, the drive, the sensation, the thoughts, the emotions in your body when you think about smoking, okay? Just notice what happens, notice what it feels like. Just be aware of that. And then also be aware of the feeling or sensation of, it might be real subtle, but there is almost like a feeling or sensation of something rising up, and that you'll feel it kind of come from deep inside. It'll come from deep inside of your body and move up rather than from the mind coming down, but it'll kind of be starting to move up. And when that starts to happen, the first thing you're going to do is do something to avoid that, to push it back down. It's a subtle feeling, and if you pay attention and if you remember, you're going to know that that is there. Okay, that's what kind of drives us 
to do something, to avoid something, you know, to, to make sure we're not going to have to feel this. So it's like this little impetus, like, oh, maybe I'll go watch a movie, or maybe I'll get on the computer. If you stop and pay attention to what's really driving that, you're going to notice there's like a physical sensation moving up through the body. You don't know what it is, but it's, a, it's, it's, it's tangible. And you're, you're, if you go and avoid, then you'll push it back down. It's like, put the lid back on, push, that, push it down again. Okay? This happens with all addictions. Every addiction that anyone has is going to have that same sensation. Okay? It's, it's like it starts to rise up, then we push it down. So today, we want to invite these sensations to present. So I'm even going to say to you, if, if, um, even if nicotine is not like a, a true uh, addiction for you, and you've never done cigarettes, don't worry about it. There's still a frequency of addiction that's going to be lifted and cleared and also assist you to be more present in your physical body, okay? So you can use it on other things, whatever you're aware of that you do have an addiction to. You can, you can just think of that, okay? So when we start to feel into the emotions of that, that craving, okay, it just feels like it just kind of takes over, okay? And what's also happening is there's a lot of entities inside that are getting ready, they want it, want it, want it. I'm a reminder, some of you know this, some of you don't. Entities inside of your body cannot be satiated by whatever their addiction is through your physical body. I don't care what the addiction is. They're, they're not in physical body, they're, they're in your body, but they can't experience the physicality because they're no longer in physicality. So whether it's eating or drinking or whatever that is, they're not getting the full effect. Therefore, they're going to want more, which compounds <laughs> the addiction. <clears throat> A lot of the thoughts that you're having, feelings that you're having are not yours. And... Some of you literally came into this physical body not fully present anyway. In fact, most everyone has not been fully, fully coming in to the physical body in many, many, probably some of you for eons of time where you haven't really fully inhabited the physicality. Partially coming in with consciousness, awareness, bringing in your, your traumas, your shocks from the soul imprint, but fully housing the body has not been happening. So this time period that we're in is assisting us to clear out the debris so we can come more fully in and really be who we really are. All your issues, oh, I'm, I, you know, I, my creativity, my, um, you know, all my joy, my, all of, you know, people complain about all that stuff. Well, let's clean out the stuff that's not you and you'll find your creativity, you'll find your joy, you'll find your happiness, you'll find your authentic self. Okay, so, you know, people don't have a clue. Humanity does not have a clue how much interference really is going on and where it's all coming from. I know those are just empty words, but it's like it goes, it's so intensely deep and vast, so much to it. Okay, so we hold trauma from everything. All right, so we're going to be clearing out past lives, we're also going to be clearing out entities, but we want to also clear out trauma and shock. So as we start to track into people, the actual energetics of cigarettes, like remember I said earlier, there's a lot of fear. Okay, so fear and anxiety is connected to cigarettes. Cigarettes are a great way. Is, don't they, they do something, it does something to the receptors in the brain that, that, you know what I mean, it shifts something inside of you. And so you, all of a sudden you can feel calmer. Okay, people start to get nervous or tweaked, oh, have a cigarette. I'll calm down. Okay, that's because of the, there's actual frequencies happening. And it, and it does help with that. Okay, so, uh, okay. How many people actually smoke? Let me just get a sense of, or have or haven't. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm actually use you, got people, as the, the checking, you know, to start tracking into the energetics and the, the past and all that, just to start to see what's really going on. Okay, so those that don't and never have had an issue, don't worry about it. Just think about the feeling of a desire, uh, you know, the desire for something, whether it's food or chocolate or sugar or whatever, okay? 
But the rest of you, I want you to really utilize the frequency of thinking about cigarettes.